All right, everybody. Um, we're just gonna do a quick walk around today of this particular rig or this this Jeep that we're taking out on this trip today. It's a quick trip. We don't have like our full setup like we typically would, but got a lot of cool stuff. I'll show you um, what we're working with. So this bad boy that we're looking at right here is a 1991 Jeep Cherokee. The powertrain is the 4.0 engine in line six. It's got an AX15 transmission on it. Now that AX15, I have swapped out the internal slave bell housing with an external slave bell housing on that just to make the shifting and the clutch pedal a little bit firmer and a little bit more reliable. She's gonna be running around the whole video. But I did make a video on how to swap out that internal to external slave cylinder as well, so check that out if you're interested. The engine, I have replaced a lot of gaskets because it was leaking a bunch when I got it. I did the rear main seal. Uh, there's headers on it. And that's really about it. Other than that, the engine, I believe, is stock. It's just the first year of the high output 4.0. Uh, we've got 31-inch all-terrain. Uh, looks like Dextero is the brand. These are Walmart tires. I usually go with the cheapest all-terrains and the size that I want that I can find. Um, I typically don't put on too many miles on the tires to really be able to give you a good review of any tire before I end up getting rid of the tire for whatever reason. Uh, the Jeep itself, these are stock little 15 inch standard, uh, like these little American spoke type aluminum turbine, I think is the name of the wheels they call them. I love them. I spent a lot of time trying to track them down for all my Jeeps because I just like the look. I've got two inch spacers on them, so that does give it a little bit better stance, and it's got a four and a half inch rough country lift kit. And I also made a video on how to put this one on as well, so that's on the channel. That's the full leaf pack in the rear. It's got springs, uh, or full, full leafs, it's got shocks, and that's really it in the rear. The front's got new coils. I did a different track bar on it than the one that came with the lift kit, but it's got those um, sway bar disconnects. Full new front end, all new tie rods, all new drag link. I have not done the ball joints yet. Uh, that's it though, everything on the front end, new control arms. Sway bar, sway bar links, pitman arm drop down, all that stuff's been done. And the paint could use some work, but otherwise I've got a, what do you call it, a roof rack, a little basket up here on top that I built. Now it's kind of neat. Um, the only tacky part about it I would say is this chain link fence that I used for the mesh. Uh, but I built this roof rack out of conduit from Home Depot. So it was very cheap, maybe like 77 bucks somewhere in the $100 range for this roof basket. And it goes the full length of the roof of the Cherokee. That was my biggest gripe with every other roof basket. You get like five foot roof baskets by four foot and they end up looking like little blocks on top. So I welded this one to get the full size that I wanted. And um, yeah, this front thing, you don't need to worry about that. That warped up a bunch when I welded it on, but I'm gonna get another plate that's straight just to cover it. Um, so I did, I will make a video on how I made this to show you. It's pretty easy and um, that was really cool. And you don't need to do the mesh here if you don't want to. You could have gotten um, like perforated steel or corrugated steel, expanded steel mesh and weld that on there if you can find it. I just couldn't find it at the time. Or you could do more crossbars going across it and that would eliminate the need for the mesh. Um, let's take a look at the inside of the Jeep. It's actually the inside is from a 1995 uh, Cherokee Wagoneer. I really like this red interior, so I always try to find it. If I find mint older Jeeps, I'll, a lot of times I'll pull the interior out of them. I ended up driving pretty far to get this interior and um, swap it in, and then it swaps in. It's all plug and play. The only thing on this Jeep that I don't have that I normally would typically like to do on my Jeeps is I put in two-door seats so that they fold completely flat. You know, if the steering wheel wasn't in the way, the passenger one will fold completely flat. And then that allows you to sleep in the back of the Jeep if your, you know, seven-foot shack could fit in here. Basically, it gives you all the legroom and headroom you could ever want if you get those two-door seats. Other than that, everything's stock. Haven't done anything with gauges. There's a radio in there. Um, manual windows, the rear, 
We didn't sleep in this in the back of this tonight because I don't have the two door seats in it. So I still left the bench seat in and I always bring my tools with me. I've needed to use them a number of times, maybe not on this Jeep, but on tons of different camping trips, I've needed my tools. So I always bring them. Another, uh, another neat thing that I'll bring sometimes is a Sawzall. It just makes it a lot easier. I got a wood blade on here. This is what I use to chop firewood. Uh, bringing an ax. I bring a hatchet when we go here, but I don't, I don't like to bring an ax. It's just another large item. The hatchet always stays in our camping kit, but that saws all bring a couple batteries and it saws through wood all night long. The only other thing is on the back, I've got a spare tire carrier. This one's just a cheap one off of Amazon. A, uh, I welded together a tow hitch with a two inch receiver and it just kind of pivots up and down and there's a little cotter pin and a hitch pin that holds it up or down. And then we've got our trash roo strapped on the back. I do have swing out tire carriers for this thing that I'll eventually get around to putting on. I just, um, they're coming off of other Jeeps and I don't want to drill through the body yet. So I think that's it for the Jeep walk around. Now we'll switch over to my girlfriend and I'll let her show you the rest of our stuff. So we have our camping kit that we take on every trip. Um, we'll pack different food based on where we're going, how long we're staying, things like that. As Miles mentioned, today we are having a quicker trip, so our breakfast is going to be some protein bars and protein shakes. The cooler is here. It's lifetime from Walmart. It's treated us really nicely, keeps things cold throughout the entire weekend. Um, probably working on four days for some of our trips. And it says that it's bear proof, which is pretty cool. Um, in our camping kit, we always keep some wet wipes, um, washing your face, your hands, you know, doing your business. We have some paper towels that will come in handy, a Coleman two burner grill. So this is usually where we'll cook our meals unless we're doing something like hot dogs, burgers that we can utilize the fire. And then I would say our MVP of the camping kit is definitely this, I guess, grilling basket. Uh, so this is how we usually make hot dogs. I think it fits about six at a time. And also you put burgers in here. We've actually made s'mores in here as well. And things like chopped up vegetables or peppers that you can cook over the fire also. We have our Coleman propane, um, a little sweep uh, broom and dustpan, the dogs collapsible bowls, can never have too many of those. Uh, bailing wire, this has probably come in handy the most out of anything in the camping kit if we get ourselves into a pickle. Some plates, pots and pans, um, we have instant coffee, I also have another coffee kit that I will bring. Ponchos are a really good thing to include. We have the dog's steak, so if we're close to other campers we can stake her down. Fire sticks that are waterproof, those are nice to have. Um, we started out with a I think this might be like a one or two person camping kit you can buy off of Amazon uh, where this can be utilized as a plate. Then it comes with a teapot, two cups, and I think that's it. Um, but we've upgraded since we do cook a lot. We wanted to get kind of full size regular kitchen items that we just keep in the camping kit full time. Hand sanitizer. We have a mosquito net that we can put up in case there's a lot of bugs anywhere. We have a um, hammock, a two-person hammock that's pretty nice to put up. Some dog shampoo in case butter explores into the water. And then we also have a lantern that comes in handy. Um, and then some miscellaneous items. I think I keep a deck of cards in here, some Yahtzee in case we get really bored, it's raining, and we want to play a game. So that is our camping kit. And it's really nice because you can uh, grab it, put it in the car, and you're pretty much ready aside from maybe clothes and tools in like five, 10 minutes. We also have a table that packs down really light, has a strap, got it on Amazon. I wanna say around, I don't know, 35 to $50. It is aluminum, so it's very light. You can see this unwraps, stands probably yay tall. And it's just really convenient to put the Coleman grill on, um, have some food, play some games, and yeah, that's a table. 
Over here we have the best camping chairs ever. So these are Tommy Bahama chairs. So they're really nice because they have a cooler on the back, another compartment, or maybe this is the cooler, this is the compartment. Um, it does fold up into a backpack, so on the bottom you'll see the straps once it closes up. And you sit pretty low, but it's nice sometimes to be you know, ground level when you're facing the fire instead of this way. But the other really nice thing is you can go back and gaze at stars in the middle of the night. <laughs> There is a, uh, she forgot to put down a support, so she'll just keep falling, but there is a support that will allow you to look at the lights, as, as you can see, as seen on TV. <laughs> and finally, we have our tent. I think this says it's like a five-person tent, I want to say, six-person but pretty easy to set up. It has two crossbars and then the orange bars that hold out the sides. So an official Cribs tour. Um, we have Butters set up here with her sleeping bag. So we usually let her roam, but as you can see, she doesn't care uh, where she goes and she steps on a lot of items, body parts. Um, so normally, oh, we <laughs> stop it. Who's gonna win? <laughs> Stop, stop. Normally she ends up in the crate at the end of the night when she is whining at the tent zipper or just causing a ruckus. Um, there's a nice little closet over there that we can keep stuff in. And we have our sleeping bags. We forgot pillows this trip because we were in a hurry. Um, but one of our other really cool gear items is this X-Ped bed. Um, can't remember the measurements on this we can put it in the description but it does fit two of us and what's really cool about this bed is it has foam inside of it and it's an air mattress so you pump it up with this whoopee cushion looking thing and it stays pretty blown up I guess throughout the entire night and it's actually really comfortable the other good thing about this is it fits between the wheel wells of the Jeep so if we do decide to sleep inside the Jeep we can still utilize this mattress That's it. <laughs> All right, everybody, that was the tour. Got this one not roaming this time, but uh, that was it. So any questions, comments, anything you want to know, if you need links to certain videos I referenced, let me know in the comments below, and we'll do another rig walk around tour with a different rig next time. Maybe we'll do more of an overlanding style trip where we show you what we're cooking and we show you some of the trails we're doing. But thanks for watching. Thanks. I hear the vibrations of a thousand bees. Okay, that can be in the outtakes.